thank you, Carmen, for those headlines there. As I said earlier, uh, Frank Top interview tonight is with uh, the MDC's Nelson Chamisa, who has come all the way to visit us. Mr. Chamisa, welcome. Thank you. Welcome to Newsroom Africa. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Ah, wonderful, wonderful. Of course, you can call us uh, throughout this conversation with Mr. Chamisa on uh, 010 And also send us some WhatsApps and WhatsApp videos and tell us what on earth is happening. You may be watching from Bulawayo, where I'm told there's a food shortage, Mr. Chamisa. Okay? What's happening in Zimbabwe? Just catch me a picture. Have, have things improved? since the demise of Mugabe in that uh, pseudo coup d'etat that took place and the ascendancy of uh, his erstwhile deputy? Well, uh, everything is now going southwards. Um, oh, no, man. I can tell you that uh, the economy is in the toilet. Um, sure. uh, food is uh, scarce. People hardly go to bed um, on full stomachs. Um, mm. There is no fuel in the country. There is a shortage of uh, medicines and drugs in the hospitals. There is a shortage of textbooks in classrooms. Salaries have been eroded. Pensioners are not being given their dues. Uh, workers are in difficult circumstances. In fact, factories are closing down. So there is basically sure. unemployment. There is a shortage of electricity. There is a shortage of everything. In fact, uh, Zimbabwe is facing a shortage of everything. Um, so it's not an exaggeration that people are queuing <coughs> for the most basic things like bread and steak <coughs> and fuel. Well, it's actually not an exaggeration. And people are beginning to reflect uh, on the possibility of wanting to see Mr. Mugabe back. Um, what? That demonstrates <laughs> how serious it is, JJ. No, man. Because, you know, you know that Tango Bob was... Uh, such a big challenge for us. Yeah. But for people to then begin to imagine possibilities of uh, a better life under Mr. Mugabe, it's just to dramatize how serious the situation has become. And, and, and when was this an overnight situation? In other words, was there a period, a window period, just a small window, where there was a, a, a glimmer of hope once Mugabe was out of the way, even before he could pass away, when just once he out, was out of office, and, and, and uh, Munangangwa took over, that things could improve, or Munangangwa almost just continued on a straight line uh, with, with what Mugabe was already doing in terms of destroying the economy there. Well, the tragedy with uh, Mr. Munangangwa is that he took over, but he did not take off. Uh, and he, he took over, but he didn't take off. He didn't take off. He didn't take off because uh, he had no clarity of what to do beyond just... Uh, sitting on the chair of leadership. Mm. Uh, leadership is not about title. Leadership is not about a position. Leadership is about responsibility and the tasks of delivering to a people. So what we are beginning to see is a dysfunctional economy, is a stalemate on the political front, is abuse of resources, uh, ubiquitous corruption in every sphere of the life of Zimbabweans, uh, mm. from the state mm. institutions, uh, to basically every facet of life. And so what you are beginning to see is a shortage of everything in a situation where you have Zimbabweans having everything. In terms of mineral resources, we have over 60 mineral resources in the country. Mm. We have an industri industrious people, a loving people, a hardworking people, a gifted people, Yo. a peace-loving people. But with all the attributes in the positive, we have nothing but a shortage of leadership. Are you saying to me there is no silver lining whatsoever in the change of administration from a ZANU-PF leadership uh, under Mugabe to the current ZANU-PF leadership under Mnangang? Was there no wake-up call of some sort just there in that, in that change of, 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 of power or, or of power changing hands? If, it is, uh, if there is any change or if it is to be um, presumed to be change, it is change in the negative. We've actually seen an escalation of treason charges. Whereas Mr. Mugabe had uh, close to about six, seven treason charges in the period of his leadership, in Mnangagwa's rulership, we've had seven treason charges. Um, being, in this short period already? Being a small uh, number, because we now have 17 uh, leaders of the opposition being dragged to court, Job Scala, 
uh, our Secretary General Charlton Wende, uh, and many other leaders in the civic uh, movement. Um, and, and the treason charge, can you explain a little bit what, what would the allegations or accusations there be? That you, you want to overthrow Mr. Munangagwa. But you do want to overthrow him, don't you? But how, how do you overthrow a person who is not there? <laughs> what do you mean? We have said that he's not there. As far as we are concerned, the election in 2018 was won in particular by the MDC. And that position has not changed. The people voted. We were voted by millions of people. People were cheated. The election yeah. was stolen. There was rigging of the outcome. Yeah. And that does not change the fact but that... But sorry, but there you need to, 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 to take me with you a little bit. Okay. Is, am I right to say, even before the elections, the MDC was already putting a question mark on the Independent Electoral Commission there, you know, already alleging that there's going to be rigging, etc. But you still participated. Why didn't you get caught at that point and not only wait after the results to then reject those results? Well, we knew that we had a fighting chance. And we knew that we won the election. So it's not as if we rejected the result. It is Munangagwa who rejected the result by going to the Constitutional Court and defending a non-existing result. We say the people's vote must count. People's vote must be yeah. respected. And that has been the bone of contention, that we now have two results in Zimbabwe, a people's result yeah. and a Constitutional Court yeah. but, validated but result. But are you saying even now you haven't accepted, because it's now two years, I think, isn't it? Uh, almost. I mean, you have, you, have, you have not accepted those results? A lie does not become the truth on account of time. <laughs> it was a lie then, it is a lie now, it will always yeah, be a lie. But you are living under that lie. We, you, we, you, are not, you are not rebelling, you are not uh, causing an insurrection in Zimbabwe. You are not, you're not making the place to come to a standstill, you are you? You don't need a rebellion to deal with a lie. You need the truth. Because revolutionaries are motivated by the truth. Yeah, but what are you going to do with the truth? How are you going to turn that truth into the reality? Of, a, of, a, of an improved lives or standard of life for the people. Well, I'm trying to understand where you are situated and maybe you can go into your a plan of action for 2020 That's to right. say, are you saying to me there is space, okay, That's within right. the constitutional dispensation, if we park, let's park the results, let's talk about the constitutional dispensation That's of right. to actually replace that leadership before the next election. Well, I must say that there's power in all truth and the truth is empowering. So for that reason, we, we know that we, we, we are going to be focusing on what the Constitution provides for. The Constitution gives us the opportunity to mobilize and to organize people. It is a constitutional right of every citizen, particularly when the government abrogates its responsibility to lead. Yeah. So we have within the Constitution, Section 88, uh, Section 162, um, they are very clear, and Section 117, in terms of the sovereignty of uh, the authority and power uh, in the context of Zimbabwe. Yeah. It resides with the people. So people have the ultimate responsibility to determine their destiny. And we will always be leading those people because people have to be led. Revolutions are a product of the objective circumstances on the ground. I, I want to understand that revolution a little more. In other words, we are, we are at a situation where you, you, you have decided, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that you, you, first of all, you don't, uh, you don't believe that the Mnangangwa government is legitimate. That's number one. That's right. Number two, that would mean that you are going to spend however long time uh, attempting to remove them from power. In other words, you're not going to wait for another constitutionally convened elections uh, before you actually get them out. You, you, your, your program is about... Uh, overthrowing them, for lack of a better way, we are, we are not moving them from power. I told you that we are not interested in overthrowing what's not there. What we are interested in is to have a revolution of values, a revolution yeah. of morals, a revolution of principles, and principles of democracy, justice, equity, dignity of the people is what we are pushing for. We will push that within the envelope of the constitutional dispensation in yeah. our country. After the break, I want, I want us to go in deeper into... But JJ, are you clear on what I'm saying? I'm clear. So that but I, I want you now to... So that I don't lose you. No, 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 I'm with you. But okay. I want you to now give me two or three big things that you think must happen and, and Zimbabweans must be mobilized around That's for right. the, your situation to change. But we'll talk about that after the break. Sure. Nelson Chamisa of the MDC joins me here tonight to understand the situation in Zimbabwe. He says the wheels are coming off. 
if you haven't come off altogether, everything running in, in shortage. I'm not sure whether they, 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 are, they, are, they also run running short of the presidential chat. Because the president has been all over, you know, giving instructions from uh, different parts of the world. Maybe that is not running short, but who knows? We'll talk about that some more after the break. It's the MDC uh, leader, uh, Nelson Chamisa, joins me. The MDC has launched what they call Agenda 2020, and I want to zone into that right now to say what, the, what comes to this agenda. Say, there's, there are some Zimbabweans uh, here, I'm told there are about 4 million of them uh, who have uh, run away from uh, the, the Mugabe over the years here. They are listening tonight. Uh, what are these two or three things you are going to mobilize them around to change the situation in Zimbabwe? Well, thank you very much, JJ. We have said that this year, 2020, has to be a breakthrough year. It mm. has to be an action-packed year, mm. but we've identified five critical areas, mm. what we are terming the five fights of the year. The first fight is a fight for a people's government and a fight for the return to legitimacy. And that fight entails fundamental and key reforms that have to be put in place. Electoral reforms, political reforms, constitutional reforms, but more importantly, media reforms that have to be instituted in order for Zimbabwe to be back on track. Mm. There are reforms that are supposed to be instituted. They were supposed to be instituted in 2000. They were not. In 2005, they were not. In 2010, they were not. In 2015, they were not. Mm. And we're saying it's now time for us to draw a line in the sand and begin to have a return to full legitimacy and democracy. So that's the first fight, the big fight for a government that responds to the people a government that understands that the people yeah. are the masters and the leaders are not bigger than the led. The people are supposed to be above their leaders and defining the trajectory of police in the context of governance. The second fight for us is the big fight around restoration of livelihoods. I've told you of basically absence of millimil, yeah. papa, sadza. Those are the basics. That's basic. Those are basic issues but we want to make sure that we begin to think about things that matter when others are thinking about a uh, fourth industrial revolution uh, you know uh, automated you know cars um, <laughs> nanotechnology uh, robotics mm. we are busy thinking about where yeah, we are going to get fuel. bread and fuel you know we've just lowered not just the esteem of the people but also the imaginations Mm. of the people of Zimbabwe because we are thinking about things we must not be worrying about. Mm. When you worry about breathing, you are no longer thriving, you are surviving. Mm. And, and that's a struggle. We need to move from that, restore life loose, and begin to have issues mm. that respond to an economic policy that speaks to the people. But then that comes after fixing our politics. Because we've said, to fix the economy in Zimbabwe, we must fix the politics. Mm. Because good politics attracts good business. Mm. You can't have good business without chlorinating the political environment and we need to be able because, to... Because to investors don't like the instability where they don't know what's going to be. Not there. just that. Capital hates noise. You know, uh, finances do not want, uh, you know, uh, deceitfulness and deception. Uh, and we want to make sure that, yes, as a working class uh, based party, we also are able to create condition, con conditions and a conducive environment for investment so that at least the working class is able to benefit uh, from their labor, but we are also allowing uh, and, and this process is, sorry, I, 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 I'll, I'll allow you to give me the other three, but uh, to, to avoid losing track, let's deal with this too quickly. Indeed. Do you see this as extra parliamentary pressure? If you are talking about things that haven't been implemented in all those years you've mentioned, sure. right? it means that the, the internal process of parliament, of getting parliament to pass the laws, etc., I have failed They're in fair. doing so, in and you don't have influence now because you are a minority in that parliament. How, how do you plan to, 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 to restore that constitutional stability? The constitution is above parliament. Parliament is a creature of the constitution. Mm. The constitution gives Zimbabweans the right to express themselves freely, and they have that right in the context of pursuing that people's government fight. Yeah. In the context of restoring the life loops, these are the things that we have to do in the spaces we, con we, 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 we contain yeah. um, uh, in the context of our politics. And, and then the second part on the economy, I mean, surely 
uh, you know, what, what influence can you have to change that situation? If, if your current government elected, or, or at least assumably voted for and won the election and power, you know, are not able to solve those basics, what, what hope do you have? Well, as, as, as the opposition or MDC in particular to do anything about that issue. We are the alternative. And I must also show you this very important statistic. We are in charge of 28 municipalities and towns, cities, out of the 32. So basically ZANU-PF is a party in the rural areas. Mm. In the urban areas, they are basically there on our own terms, because we are the leading party there. So we have two parties, the leading party and the ruling party. Mm. Leading because that is being derived from the people's mandate, ruling because it's the legal order that they're deriving from the constitution. But does that force. mean therefore that you yourselves are, are un, if you are saying there's a shortage of everything, could that be only put at the feet therefore of ZANU PF, if well, you are so much in charge of this, so many municipalities. That's the point I wanted to make on the con in the context of the life laws. There are little spaces that we could also create zones of autonomy, and zones of delivery, yeah. zones of excellence. So we must tell and teach ZANU PF how to run. And how long have you been in charge uh, of those 28 uh, municipalities? Well, in some cases we've been in charge for almost like a decade, but yeah. in some cases they were also under ZANU PF. So, but we've managed to retain now all the cities that we have centers understand. of excellence that that could you could say to me this is how mdc would govern should it govern zimbabwe because in, if in you are in charge of so many municipalities there must be some centers of excellence somewhere where people are not starving where people are not uh, hopeless well you go to lawayo they've run their seat very well you go to manikaland it has been exceptional in mtare as a city you go to Mashingo voted by UNESCO as one of the best cities on account yeah, Ulawayo, but people are saying well, there's no food there the, the World Food Organization is scrambling there well, to raise money now food, food belongs to the central government but you can talk about issues to do things with like local and things like exactly they're intact it did not been for the MDC being in those spaces the place would have collapsed there would be rural areas or ghost towns but ZANU is in the business of just touching things they turn into dust how much of a, 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 a solid and stable vehicle is the MDC itself? We have seen, uh, you know... Uh, you you know, must remember that we still have the other three, but I can... Yeah, yeah please explain. Explain to me slowly about sure. this uh, split and splinters, you know, of MDC. What's the story there and why can't there be unity? Is, is that a project that you are pursuing in any way? Well, you must understand that we are operating in a very difficult environment. Our colleagues in ZANU PF thrive on destroying, diverting, and dividing. So this is a 3D strategy that they have always used against the MDC. But the beauty is that the center is holding. The beauty is that the party is actually bigger than it was. So when people choose to move away from the party, it's a normal process. I'm sure the ANC has also <laughs> had such you know, uh, circumstances. I hope you're not seeing them as a standard. Well, they continue to be one of the key political parties on the continent. Yeah. And that have also... But the, 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 it's not, don't stand at as far as unity is concerned, I mean. Well, um, of course, their dynamics. I mean, bigger families also have bigger fight, challenges yeah. and bigger fights. So it's not something unusual. It's expected. So tell me about the MDC. You have three MDCs. Which one are you representing? There, there's only one MDC. The others are splinters. The, no. The, what do they call themselves? Well, they, they are exfoliation um, from, the, from the main Exfoliation, part. like splits. Yes, they, they're peeling off, you know. They don't so so you, you are in charge of the main MDC? The only MDC. The others, don't they call themselves MDCs as well? Well, they, there's always beauty in associating with a big brand. <laughs> but that does not make it uh, any significant <laughs> challenge. The people are very clear. Yeah. They voted in the election. We got over 2.6 million. Yeah, but what sort because of force are the split splitters? Because if you go back to the ANC as an example, you know they laughed off uh, EFF as a splinter, and uh, you know they have been a, a, a pain in the side of the ANC for, for years now. 
you know, uh, 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 which, which means that you shouldn't scoff at the, of at the possible split in a party of liberation or a party of that size. So just give me a, paint me a picture of the MDC split. Is it like, you know, ANC with a little EFF and COPE there, or is it like ANC and PAC split, big chunks going one side and the other? That's quite different. I must say that the so-called splits have not been ideological. They have been to do with personality differences. Mm. with people who are motivated by other interests, particularly self-aggrandizement. And this is why, in the context of our party, those who are no longer with the party are now either deployed by Mnangagwa as ambassadors, or they are working with Mnangagwa as affiliates of Mr. Mnangagwa. Mm. So we are not worried about that, because the people are very clear. They are the ultimate masters and empires of any political you know, trajectory. So we are not worried about that. It's, it's a sideshow. And we are, we, we are not concerned. Yeah. How big is the MDC in relation to ZANU PF in terms of just, just appeal to Zimbabweans membership, for example, let's say it's an indicator? We have over a million members. We are the largest party in the country. ZANU PF, without the support of the state, cannot survive. In fact, ZANU has been existing because they are on a state life support machine. Once you remove them from the state where they abuse state resources, they are literally non-existent. Mm. Mm. So how did they win elections if they are so non-existent? They have never won ele elections. They will not win elections. We will defeat them any election, any time. But what they do is that they manipulate the results. And you know that what matters in Africa is who, who announces the result. And that's where we need to be dealing with the reforms to make sure that we don't have this continued issue of manipulation of the results. Do you have confidence in the process started by, by President Mbeki? Uh, I saw that uh, there were reports that uh, post that process, you were not invited to a meeting between uh, ZANU PF and, and opposition uh, parties that yeah. was meant to actually take that process to the next stage. Uh, your comment on that? They are not opposition parties. They are ZANU PF surrogates. Mm. They were invited by ZANU PF. President Becky was given a platform by ZANU PF to also address those uh, opposition political parties yeah. in courts. But they are not opposition. There's only one alternative, that is the MDC. And that is factual. So you excluded from that meeting? Well, look, we had already had our own chance to meet with President Becky. And we said we are not going to be part of a process where there is a choir, Mr. Mnangagwa's choir, and he wants us to come and sing this song. We are not his puppets. We are a genuine alternative, and we want to see change in Zimbabwe on the basis of reforms, on the basis of engagement, good governance, and making sure that we have a return to legitimacy. And those are the issues we've been focusing on. Yeah. What, 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 what occasioned this intervention by Mbeki? Well, I suppose they are also seeing that Zimbabwe is on fire, Zimbabwe is burning, and a burning Zimbabwe will definitely result in a uh, setting ablaze uh, of the entire region. You know, you can't have a successful South Africa or a prosperous SADC if Zimbabwe is a failed state. Zimbabwe has become uh, the sick child of the region. Yeah. Uh, and, whenever and you don't think dialogue uh, facilitated by Mbeki would have been useful as a, as a person who is an independent arbiter? It is a useful thing. We have always said that uh, uh, we, we will not shun uh, platforms of peace. Yeah. We will not shun opportunities of dialogue. Because we want to give peace a chance. I mean, right. we, we control the urban centers. We have young people. We, we, we have all the energy in the urban areas. Yeah. But I want to talk about the, the, the economy a little bit, uh, which, which, which addresses your second part, because Lampers. you seem to make a distinction between, okay, where you are in charge and where national is in charge. You know, yeah. There have also been recent things about your currency. Now you've got a new currency and what have you. Sure. Previously, when you tried that, people had to you know, carry your currency in wheelbarrows and just a mess. It's not the currency. It's just tissue paper that is the <laughs> It's current, yeah? <laughs> okay, we'll talk about it after the break. Nezen Chamisa sure. uh, of the MDC is my guest tonight. Stay tuned for more conversation after the break. <laughs>